Hey everybody, it's Kenya and I'm back at it today to talk to you about five ways that dating in Korea are very different from the way we date in the US. So number one is Okay, so when people meet in Korea, it's very different than how we meet here. When we meet in the U.S., we can meet a tons of different ways um, through mutual friends, speed dating, at the club, out in the mall, at work. There are so many different ways that we meet people um, when we're single and looking to date. But in Korea, generally, if you are of a certain age, so usually I guess anywhere between maybe 18 to mid 20s and you're looking uh, to get serious and settle down and find someone to get married with and start a family and have kids what you do is you're introduced to people through your family members it's a way of having that pre-approval on someone uh, to confirm that they're not crazy you know their background certain things like that Koreans don't generally just like meet up like see somebody they like in a store and go and approach them that's not how they do it there they're usually if it's something serious they're they're introduced through family members they go on a few dates to see if they like each other they like each other they keep dating and then eventually they get married which leads me to the next topic So how weddings work in uh, Korea they have this thing of doing some people have the option of doing two two weddings so they'll do the Western wedding which is the white dress and you know having it in some form of a they don't really I've never seen them have it in churches they go to these halls but the hall is set up like a beautiful church but then they also have the option to do a traditional Korean wedding where they get dressed up in uh, the traditional garb and they go through the ceremonies of bowing to each set of parents and then sharing food and uh, I'll try to include some pictures of that in this video so a few differences in how the weddings work it costs more to have both so sometimes people just do the the Western wedding because they love the, the long white gown and looking beautiful on their wedding day. They like that aspect of it. But it's very different from how we do it in America. So when you have a, a wedding in America, typically, if you are Christian, they do it in a church and it's to be taken seriously so everyone has to be quiet and you listen to the preacher as he says what he says and you listen to the bride and the groom as they say what they have to say. In Korea, mm, not so much. During the ceremony, people in the audience who come to see them are talking, they're loud, you can barely hear what's going on, and I guess that part is just for the bridegroom and the person who's marrying them because people are constantly talking and it's hard to hear what's going on, and it can be a little bit chaotic. Um, at times but after that they all uh, take pictures so they take pictures of friends family the bride's family the groom's family things like that the same as we do uh, but here's the difference the big difference that I actually like and appreciate is that they don't necessarily go broke I think the bride and groom they do put some money down on renting the hall but in terms of feeding the family these within these halls they have you know in the on whatever floor it may be they have like a buffet style and the attendees has to pay their own for their own food and usually it's about 40 or 50 dollars I think you actually give it to the bride and the groom there there's someone at the wedding who's collecting money for them so part of it is paying for the food but then you can also give more which is for like a donation or a congrats to the bride and groom on their wedding so they don't really go broke having a wedding and going through all that like yeah they might have to pay for what they wear the dress and the tuxedo but it's not as expensive as we make it here like seven thousand ten thousand some people pay even 20 30 40 like that's just ridiculous in my personal opinion for one day but you know people got to make their dreams come true right <laughs> i guess 
So for those of us single ladies and single men who have not yet been married, there's a different kind of life, right? So a lot of foreign men who come to Korea, one of their main objectives is to hook up with all the Korean women, right? As many as they can. And hey, I'm sure they'll even take a few foreigners too that they've never met before. It goes both ways, so let's be real clear about that. Now, a lot of us might be like, oh my God, that's so deplorable. How dare they? Men are such pigs. But you know, we all like a little spice in our lives sometimes, and we all like to try new things. Like you've heard of the references to Latin lovers or Italian stallions, so you know how it is. We, we are all human, sexual beings. That's just how it is. Even though I still think it's deplorable to, <laughs> to make it an objective to try to sleep with women just because they're of a certain race or nationality. So here's the deal, it goes both ways. There are, there have been stories upon stories of Korean men and Korean women. And by the way, there are more Korean women who date foreigners than there are Korean, than there are Korean men. Why? I think someone broke it down for me before, but I can't remember. Anyway, there ha it has been known that they keep their little foreign boo, boo things on the down low. Like they keep them as secrets away from their family members because their families want them to date Koreans so they can get married and have Korean babies and live an honorable traditional Korean life, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so there are, even though the culture is super conservative, there are hookups, you know? There are Koreans who intentionally go to foreigner bars because they know they're going to meet a foreigner. And they do it to either date a foreigner because for Korean women, it's like an upgrade to date a foreigner, specifically if it's a white guy. Um, and sometimes they do it just for the experience, you know, just to hook up to see what it's like or to have fun. <laughs> so that's the secret life of hookups in Korea. It happens. And that's probably one of the only places where some Koreans do let loose and will try to talk to someone or approach someone in like a bar or something like that but nine times out of ten drinking isn't a lot of drinking is involved so you know give them that liquid courage and nine times out of ten they're probably it's probably just a hookup again there are exceptions where people meet in a club and they become serious uh become in a serious relationship so it does happen So the first time I ever heard of love motels, it was years ago, maybe 10 or more years ago on a, a TV station like Dateline or something like that. And um, I think they were talking about Japan and their love motels, how when a couple wants to have sex, they don't do it in their home, they go to a love motel. I thought that was so strange. Having lived in Korea now, I do understand it a little bit better in terms of how it works. So people live with their parents until they get married in Korea. So if the parents say go and they definitely are not having their kids bringing people home and you know being up in the bedroom with the opposite sex to kiss or be alone or whatever. In Korea the more respectful way to spend some alone time with the person you're dating is to go to a love motel. These are motels that are created for romance and privacy for couples who want to be alone or she say oh she say oh okay she she say oh in korean means take a rest so this is a phrase that will be exchanged between couples like oh she say oh like do you want to take a rest and that means do you want to go to a love motel and hang out now maybe maybe sometimes they actually rest but nine times out of ten they are not resting it's like our expression of sleeping together you ain't sleeping <laughs> you ain't getting a wink of sleep but yeah so that's how they do it that's how they do it so when people are dating it's very common for them to do what they do on their date and then in the night or in the day um, at a love motel now I have stayed in a love motel not for hookup people mm -mm 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 -mm. But because they're, they're, they can sometimes be cheap and convenient, like they're located downtown or they're located in central areas a lot of times. And so once when my friends came to visit me, <laughs> I took them to a love motel to get the full Korean experience. 
Oh my gosh, it was the, the most uncomfortable experience. Um, yeah, they had all kind of things. They had like sexy body lotion and energy drinks and condoms and all this stuff in the room. Um, I think the condoms, you had, it was like a coin machine you had to pay for or something like that. But it was, they had a hot tub. It's, it's just, they have it set up for that romantic time. Um, very, very interesting. But yeah, so that's the story behind Love Motels, if you ever wanted to know. For some people, cheating is cheating. If you're with someone else, that's it. How dare you, right? But for certain, some people, some maybe some of the older people, I don't know if the younger, younger generation feels this way, but for the older generation, if a man has sex with a prostitute, they don't consider that cheating and the woman, even the wife doesn't consider it cheating because they look at that as, you know, them relieving stress, right? So the man is working, he's taking care of the woman and the kids and why he can't go to his wife for relief, I don't know. Um, I don't know. But yeah, some people consider that that that's okay and on top of that it's the women who have their little boy toys as well so it, it sometimes goes both ways I had a friend who went out on a date with a Korean guy who owned a popular dessert store and after their date when he was dropping her off somehow the conversation came up and you know she found out that he was married and she was like oh we don't do that where I come from. And he was like, no, no, it's okay. You can be secret. It's okay. <laughs> and she was like, no, I, we don't date married men where I'm from. And he was like, oh, it's okay. My wife has boyfriend too. My wife has boyfriend too. He was trying to make all these excuses in the world. So they will try you. They will try you. And to some people, it's okay. But whew, let me wrap this up because I'm talking way too much. Those are five examples of how dating in Korea is very different from dating in America. So what's your story? Do you have any uh, stories or tips or experiences to share about dating in Korea, about dating abroad? Let me know. And don't forget, like the video, share the video, and go on ahead and comment down below.